pulls us away from the actual real relationship that we're trying to nurture. And so, as we, as we understand this, try to think about a couple where the spouse of a person who is struggling with addictions, whether they're married or if you're in a dating relationship, that because of this bondedness that is created, if you're at the spouse or in that relationship with this person, then you feel a sense of distancing, a disconnect, a disattachment. And many of the women that we work with often report that I just don't know this guy. I really don't know who he is. He seems to be somewhere else. And indeed, she's right. There is an intuitive sense. And I would just say that the, the women feel it, men. They know when there's this disconnect. They know when there is that feeling of, of disattachment because those pathways are being sent somewhere else. She is not feeling that connectedness with her. And she also knows when there is a man in her life that is a faithful man, a man that is trustworthy. She senses it very deeply. So men, create a connectedness with the person you care for. Don't let your attention and your bondedness be sent elsewhere and misdirected because she's going to feel it and you are not going to be able to feel that sense of connectedness yourself, which will then result in a sense of loneliness and isolation because then you'll become secretive yourself. Please be a man of loyalty. Please be a man of honesty and caring. Be passionate, but safe. Play no games. Create no manipulation in the relationship. Because if we're trying to hide something, then we manipulate so that we cannot be understood or found out. And in today's world, that is very, very common. Just a quick understanding of this. How many of you have read the Twilight series or seen any of the movies? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> okay, I see many of you, and I think the rest of you aren't admitting to it. <laughs> Men, listen to the message that is being explained here because it is a phenomenon in our culture. And I tried to understand, and I've spoken to many women about this, including my, my very... Um, common sense wife who couldn't wait to see the movie and I couldn't understand it. What makes millions, uh, not only teens, but millions of actually grown, mature, and smart women stand in lines to buy the book uh, or to see the movie about a vampire? What's that about? Seems kind of silly, doesn't it? Well, what's the message we're listening to? It's actually a love story. It isn't about, va about vampires. It's a love story. And it's a love story that we men had better listen to. Because we have here Bella, who is the main character, the female character, who falls in love with William, who is what? He's a vampire. That sounds strange. But what are the characteristics of William? He drives a nice car, and he's supposed to be you know, a good-looking guy, too, and those are important. But really, what is the draw that Bella feels towards this man? She senses his passion, his deep, deep passion. He has an almost unquenchable desire for her. But he's vowed to make no harm for Bella. He has vowed to do nothing that will hurt her. He has vowed to protect her, to defend her. He is a safe man for her, even in the midst of his great passion and his power. That's the draw. That's what a woman is seeking. That's what she wants in her man. She wants to be one who feels desired, wants to feel captivating, 
wants to, a man to be able to want her and desire her, yet to protect her. And William does that. He defends her virtue. That was stated in the last movie. I heard that statement. I went, wow. He's defending her virtue. My point is that pornography, lust, and self-indulgence clouds and distracts us from being able to 